if you look at O4 fractures, they are partial articular fractures classified as B3 in the AO classification. They are characterized by coronal fracture lines. They are more commonly seen on the lateral condyle. Rarely, or not rarely, you can see in the middle condyle as well. Rarely as a bicondylar pattern, you can also see that. There are other classifications described, uh, system described as well. This was uh, old one in 1978, which describes this classification, these fractures into three types. One and two, where the fracture line is along the posterior femoral cortex, and type three, a much uh, oblique pattern. Again, these guys uh, described it on the basis of soft tissue attachments, and then they said uh, the type two fractures, which don't have much soft tissue attachments, are more prone for avascular necrosis. But of course, this has been disapproved subsequently, and uh, that's not really the case. There have been a few more classification systems, uh, a couple of them CT-based, but I think like currently uh, for this talk, I will be using this uh, Latinia classification system to describe the different kind of fractures that I'm going to describe. So as I said, this is based on the location of the fracture line and soft tissue attachment. So one and three tend to have more soft tissues compared to type two. And these fractures can even have a dislocation pattern because of the ligament attachments to it. So if you look at the fracture lines in a OFA fracture, they are not exactly coronal. So, okay? so like you can have uh, different uh, fracture lines are different, going in different directions. The most commonly you have fracture lines coming from uh, superior to inferior in the medial lateral direction, so, sorry, lateral medial direction in the lateral condyle, and also antero superior to posterior inferior in the other plane. So these fractures doesn't tend to follow the typical coronal fracture lines all the time. So this is the commonest directions that you can see them. And one of the most important things when you treat these fractures is not to miss them in your initial evaluation. So this was a paper from Abavi in 2005, which looked at these fractures and said almost 30 percentage were missed on their initial plane radiographs and were subsequently diagnosed on CT scans. So this can look very, very subtle. And these were, in fact, a couple of x-rays which we saw missed initially. So you can miss a lot of these fractures if you rely only on plain radiographs. So CT scan are the standard of investigation in the, uh, diagnosing these fractures. Sometimes if you have a dislocation component, you can take a look at an MRI as well. So make sure you look at your lateral x-rays very, very carefully. And when it comes to surgical treatment, I would take you through these three uh, kind of uh, major events when you do a OFA fracture the different exposure that you need, different reduction techniques, and how you fix them. Depending on the fracture pattern, you may choose to do them in supine, lateral, or prone position. So most of these fractures, both lateral and medial, can be accessed from anterior-based surgical approaches. This is true for type one and three fractures. So you can either use a modified quartz sparring approaches like the Schwarzbuckler, the parapetlar, either lateral or medial, depending on where you deal with. And these, these, these approaches, especially on the lateral side, can be combined with the girdy tubercle osteotomy as well if you want a more posterior lateral exposure. On the medial side, a medial subvastus is often sufficient. If you are dealing with one and three, for two, you might require a posterior based approach. So this is a, a, a lateral OFA. And this is to show how you can do a girdle tubercle osteotomy where you need posterolateral access. So in this case, I did a rim plating across the lateral condyle, and this is how you can take down the girdle tubercle and then refix it with a small plate or a couple of screws. So this was a latinue type 2A kind of an injury where you can see intermediate fragments and a lateral much posterior OFA. So an anterior base surgical approach with a Gerdes tubercle osteotomy gets me there, do mini fragment rim plating, uh, 2 or 2.4, I think, and then a couple of screws for the Gerdes tubercle osteotomy. And you can get them straight away moving. For a medial OFA, as I said, a medial subvastus approach is most often enough. So this was a 59-year-old female with a type 3 medial OFA. You can see the fracture plane more oblique on the medial side. So medial subvastus, the reduction by using clamps, 
and then secure them with wires and you can use a lot of different plating constructs here so here we have used a 3-5 proximal tibia plate which can kind of like a raft kind of screw configuration in the distal fragment i've also used a couple of a small two hole plate anteriorly because she was osteoporotic so that my screws don't sunk in so i use that as a washer so this is what it looks like she subsequent to diabetic she had an infection around 10 months we waited on for a while and removed the plate at 14 months she was completely healed so this is uh, another type 2c a very small ofa on the lateral side these are difficult to deal with anterior base surgical approaches for these you might have to come from a posterior base surgical approach so this was the patient he had an anterior wound as well so the idea was to work with two windows this was done in lateral position and you can see that the first step is to identify the common peroneal nerve and then create windows anterior and posterior to the biceps so this is how it looks like you can see the biceps the it band and the first window is anterior to the biceps the blue thing is tagging on the common peroneal nerve and here i have tagged the lcl and the popliteal tendon and the sutures fiber wire sutures are in the meniscus so you work between two windows the reduction and visualization of the joint is done through the anterior window and fixation is done through the posterior window so this is what it looks like post op and that is after healing so we used counter sorry we used headless screws around 3 five, 3 5 i think so this is another lateral ofa again much posterior you can see on the images and you also have an intermediate fragment that is not well aligned so sometimes this can be tricky to do even from the approach that i showed before because like the intermediate fragment might complicate my reduction of the main fragment so again a very similar strategy but here use a lateral epicondylar osteotomy as well then you can see that intermediate you can see the stabilizers there with them in place you can't see anything there so take them off then you can see the intermediate fragment and then get them everything reduced and then fix the osteotomy with either screws or a mini plate so these are the different kind of exposures that you might need to deal with these fractures the next step is reducing these fractures most of our fractures need a little bit of more flexion to kind of visualize and reduce them and some of type 1 and 3 fractures may actually reduce with a little bit of less flexion actually because at around 30 degrees the collaterals are much laxer and the sometimes if you take the knee into hyperflexion the posterior tibial slope can kind of like make your reduction a lot more difficult the anterior drawer becomes a lot more difficult so once you reduce them you can hold them with different clamps and then go get the fixation type 2 fractures often have no attachments to them so you don't you have to go there directly and then reduce them accurately point to point so this is my typical redu reduction strategy for a ofa so first step is to distract clean the fracture surface and then start mobilizing mobilize the apex proximally keep the spreader on and then i have an sham screw into the shaft so as to derotate to make way for the displaced fragment to come anteriorly and then a weber clamp to create an anterior drawer so with a combination of all these things you will be able to reduce most of these fractures and once you reduce them clamp it before you can start fixing it some of these fractures you can see impaction comminution is quite common I'll, i'll come again on that you can see some impaction as well this is commonly seen a transition of the patellar femoral and tibia femoral articulations and when you have them you might have to disimpact them get them reduced and if you have very limited subcondyl bone you might have to graft them as well so this is one such case in a young male he had a lot of other injuries as well a open uh, floating knee so this is a, he had a type 2 ofa with a distal impaction and this is what it looks like you can see the articular surface completely smashed up so we disimpact and reduce them and that is what looks like this after disimpaction and then we go ahead and fix it so you have to be aware of it so that like you need you have strategies that you can use them on table so some of these fractures may have uh, quite a bit of impaction so uh, coming to fixation so how you fix them so most often we use screws for this fractures either from anterior to posterior or from posterior to anterior the commonest is anterior to posterior this is very acceptable for type 1 and 3 fractures you can start proximal to the articular flare 
you can i prefer to use 3 5 fully threaded screws sometimes if i have to go through the articular cartilage i will use smaller screws 2.7 so that i don't have to damage it too badly always be aware of your screw trajectory if you are going to the medial condyle you will have a, you will need a much oblique screw trajectory because of the anatomy but the question is like in types 1 and 3 are ap screws alone sufficient there have been a few studies i won't say great quality but which have shown that they may not be always sufficient and you might have to kind of like augment it with plate fixation as well this is true especially if you have comminution intermediate and intermediately and also in patients who have compromised bone quality so in these cases you can combine ap screws with some kind of a plating construct i'll i'll again like elaborate on that so if you look at this study pretty uh, this came in 2017 i think which looked, did a 3d mapping 2d and 3d mapping of of fractures and if you look at the data in this study almost 45% of lateral ofas and 35% overall have comminution so not all the time you can rely on two screws alone okay so you have to kind of like read the ct scans better identify those intermediate impactions and those comminutions are at the exact weight bearing surface where the loads are concentrated so you cannot kind of like treat them inadequately so you have to be prepared for plating these fractures and more often than not these guy this these uh, fractures will require more than two screws from anterior to posterior you have to kind of like treat them more robustly so that you can mobilize them straight away so for pa screws yes you will need them in some situations where you have uh, very posterior exits as i showed you before so this is a type 2b ofa again we did this with a posterior lateral approach and a lateral epicondyle osteotomy again because like we couldn't get access to that area and once we got this was a old case we can see a lot of short headless screws if we do this now we will use much longer headless screws and then the epicondyle was fixed with a uh, uh, with a with a with a partial threaded screw again like you can use a different kind of plating configurations so this is one 25 year old female missed ofa initially we saw her at 8 weeks you can see the ct again comminution at the intermediate level and bit of impaction as well she's had a long apex you had a long cortical segment here so you can take advantage of that so this patient like underwent open reduction lax screws two sevens from the articular flare sorry from the through the articular cartilage three fives proximal to it and then a posterior anti glide plate so this was the x ray that i showed you previously and this was the ct scan as you can see you have a displaced ofa there and also a fibular head avulsion so in this case again a uh, open reduction with a girdis tubercle osteotomy in this case uh, using a pelvic plate to plate along the rim of the articular cartilage and then this is what it looks like so you can use a different kind of plating configurations so this was uh, non union in a 29 year old male 9 months initially treated by conservative means and we saw them at 9 months and this was the kind of a type 1 ofa you can see it parallel to the uh, articular sorry posterior femoral shaft and we mobilized it again a girdis osteotomy here and then once we reduced it we used lax screws and then neutralized it further with couple of plates a phyllos and then a posterior anti glide uh, configuration using a tubular plate and this is what it looks like and they went on to heal pretty well so in summary ofa are articular fractures and they need anatomical reduction and a very stable fixation to get the knee moving straight away you need a ct for diagnosing them and planning their uh, surgical strategy and also not to miss them in the initial x rays more fractures have central comminution than you think so plan accordingly type 1 and 3 latenio types can be fixed by lax screws supported with a plate more often than you not than not type 2 fractures will need or will take only screws often from posterior thank you